the engineer and designer who engineered the Gold Gate Bridge engineered a bridge he knew full well could not be built. But he had complete faith in the craftsmen of the time to get the job done, and we did. I'm Eric Hollenbeck. I own and operate Blue Ox Millworks and Community School in the Redwood Forest. Blue Ox is a custom job shop. We make architectural millwork for buildings all over the United States, doors, windows, moldings, turnings. Our newest machine in the whole place is 1948, same year I was born. Corner blocks. I did 1,200 of these by hand. You want to see one done? Sure. OK. I still got it, huh? <laughs> well, if this tree is 1,800 years old, uh, yeah, Rome would have been going OK. I think I'm a wood person. Uh, we're wood people up here. We're using the same kind of equipment that the original guys used. Clear back when, well, when my grandfather's grandfather would have been doing this. I liken it to a train going down the road. Well, as the train's going down the track, the train of society, it's scooping up information, scooping up, scooping up, scooping up, scooping up as it goes down the track. For some reason, the train can only hold so much information. I don't know why. And the guy on the caboose, he's throwing the information off as fast as he can to make room for new information coming on the front. And the problem with that is that the information we're throwing off is the information it took us 25,000 years to glean. We first had the idea of the school 25 years ago. These are kids that would not otherwise be in school. Starting at the top is the public school system. If you get kicked out of there, you go to Continuation High School. If you get kicked out of that, you go to locally here, Zobarnum. If you get kicked out of that, the last rung of the ladder is called court-ordered community school. And that's what these students are. And they're great kids. There isn't anything wrong with them. They're just uh, doers and not sitters. Every single time I see wood or something, I'll just try to make something out of it. Let me see. All right. Oh, nice. I fought my way through school. So I, I get these kids. I get that when you can't fit in, then you got to look for some other way to fit in. And. That ain't always pleasant. So at the shop, they get to fit in. They get to fit in just being themselves. They get to fit in by making something. place, huh? Even, even with my ringing in the ears, it's quiet. It makes the ringing in the ears go away. I ran away from the monsters for 45 years, and I ran a damn good race. You know, I used work. I worked myself to the bone every day of the week, seven days a week, and I used beer drink a beer at night, and then I'd fall into bed and everything would be fine. Now I've reached an age where the beer doesn't work and I can't work as, quite as hard anymore, and uh, I am a veteran. I'm a frontline infantry veteran. Um, I was in some of the heaviest combat in Vietnam at a month and a half into 19 years old. I got two Eric's going on all the time. I've got a 65-year-old Eric, 
and I have an 18 year old scared to death little kid. You, you take a spring and you bend the coil spring. You can try and bend it back and you can get it close, but you can never get that spring back to where it originally was. And that's what happened to all of us. We got bent. I see now at 65 that that's what I did. I built my own island. I built my own island I, don't, I didn't have to get off of. That's why we got a blacksmith shop. That's why we got a machine shop. That's why we got a sawmill and a molder building and a foundry and all the other things so that I don't got to go to the store. I don't got to go to no place. I just make whatever I got to make. Why don't you want to go out there? <sighs> because I don't fit. It's not a, that and me aren't a good fit. In 45 years, I have bent the spring back without snapping it as close to what it was as I can get it, but uh, it, it don't never come back. When you make something, when you go through the process, all the steps, and at the end, you have a finished product that you made with your own hands out of your own mind that is your own design. It's a reflection of your soul. You can start with nothing and build your own company. It's coming from somebody who did that. I have tried to do something positive out of the experience and we were just contacted by the Veterans Administration and asked if we would start a school for returning vets. I'm suddenly seeing that um, there, was, there was a rhyme and a reason for it. It just wasn't the rhyme and reason I thought there was. I'm at a point in my life and my craftsmanship now that I get that feeling when I see the young people but I tell you something, they're going to take us places that phew, I never even dreamed of. In your filming here, every film that you ever make has got two stories. What's the film about? And then what's the film really about? It's about the pride of making something. It's about the pride of doing for yourself. And I go back to the Golden Gate Bridge story and the pride of those craftsmen that built something that everybody in the world knew full well could not be built at the end. Think, think of what they must have thought when the first carriage ran over that thing. What a hell of a deal. In the whole world, there's only two kinds of jobs. There's a job you take a shower before you go to work in the morning, and there's a job that you take a shower when you come home from work at night. And the world needs both of them.